the majority of tattoos are still using feature phones as opposed to smartphones. From your presentation, it seemed like there was a lot more access to smartphones um, within the Cape Flat area. Is that true? It's, it's, it's a very similar in a lot of feature phones. However, we've, we've really taken and realized that we can do so much with a feature phone. So it's, it's, it's again, how can you maximize that for people who are really using uh, Of course, if you prepare yourself for the next two to three years, I'm sure you'll be flooded with low-cost smartphones anyway. Um, you know, if I just, I mean, in this room, how many people in this room currently are using Facebook? Against the agenda, are you using Facebook? Um, how many students at university are using Facebook? Uh -huh. A large volume of them. Half of them. Yeah. 10%. Most of them. 90%. 90%. And of course, that desire of wanting to be connected will ensure that they will try and find an innovative way. So what we've done, we, although the training is not all just on PC, we do PC and mobile training. Uh, so it's basically to see what they have at hand and how they can use that. That's what we need. But we, our, our, I think the latest statistics in South Africa of feature of smartphones are not that high. It's still the dominant in the feature phone. Plus, uh, you can feature phones now. Uh, it's somehow yeah. allowing people to social networks. Mm -hmm. They could have Facebook without even having it. Right, that's the best thing to do. How did you face the Did you face any barriers from the government? Do you face any barriers from the government as to what you were, what you were, what you were trying to achieve? Uh, good question. How do I answer that, Christina? <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as uh, like ICT policy and what uh, what do you achieve for a socially focused? Um, what's the has that ever conflict with the national ICT policy of South Africa? Um, we were actually working mostly with the Department of Social Development, but then of course we also work with now the Department of Communications that we are speaking to, and uh, we have worked through your partnership with Science and Technology. Uh, so it's not there's been no conflict at all. You know, it's been we would have loved to have seen kind of a, and that's what we're trying for to get kind of a closer working relationship with them. Because what we do is we kind of like trying to leverage the power of technology in unusual setting. So, I mean, we, we also have an art left in the rural area as well. We purely we can maximize use of mobile phones. Uh, so, so those are the kind of things that we are doing. Uh, but, I mean, these things, of course, take time. We are only three years old. So. I'm just asking about the business model where the money comes from. Uh, all right. Yeah, so all that itself is we don't have any big donors, so we operate as a social enterprise. So what we do is we sell products and services in return so we can sustain the work that we do. So everything that we offer to the community is free. So the academy is free, the, the counseling services that we offer via mobile phone is free. Anything else to the community, there's no charge to it. However, there are some companies that are willing to pay to utilize some of our services. For example, we've trained over 3,000 people in the use of digital media. There are companies that can't afford expensive digital media agencies who want to be on the social media platform environment. So what we do, we basically go and do work for them. Right? In return, they pay us, but we then use our people from our academy to do the work. So we could have a housewife at home cleaning the house, but at the same time she can manage a company's Facebook page using a cell phone. So if you up there, she generates an income. And so money comes to our level, money also would go through too. So that is something of, and then also we have a which I felt to mention, we have an, an incubator where the ideas that gets generated from the community, those ideas like we did with Jamex with who we see and which is the key. We take those ideas, we take it into the incubator, and we turn those ideas into social enterprises. And those products and services we then, as our labs, ask if we can sell that on behalf of the entrepreneurs. 
And of course, we also have a global distribution channel. Because we now have activity in 14 countries, we can actually sell a product from South Africa into 14 countries. We can sell a product from Nigeria into South Africa and vice versa. So we actually created this kind of global distribution channel. So it means that if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to take your product globally and that's a potential, we can actually do that to the network. And that is, I mean, imagine someone is growing up in Vietnam, the, in a very kind of a rural area, has got a great idea, a product that can be used elsewhere, and now you can actually take your product globally. That, of course, is where you make, where you see substantial amount of value. So our business model is basically kind of that kind of operation. It's free to community, and if it's socially inclined, it's free. But whatever we learn, the processes, the technologies, we package that in a way that we can sell it to a corporate. And that's how we sustain the social part. Answers the question? And of course, this value we have big, large numbers. We currently reach over two and a half million people. Not that we've leveraged that yet, but there are people that's willing to pay for an audience of two and a half million people at that. Um, we currently use it purely for research purposes. And then this company is willing to pay for research as well. Any other comments or questions? Maybe I'd like to ask from the audience, do you think what they have done, is that doable here? Is there a need and is there an audience and is it possible? And if, if not, what's, what, are, what are the sort of obstacles? Anyone? Comments? There's definitely a need. Um, it's interesting how these technology address the social problems. Um, and I think that's the greatest power of technology and how we've uh, caught us in a situation where we don't have to go through, I've said this before here, we don't have to go through the small steps of laying out a copper network or jumping straight to mobile technology. Um, harnessing that power can be a very powerful tool, as is evident within your society, but as well as in Tanzania. Um, I think we can achieve it. I don't see why not. In line with that, I'm curious, what would they, what would they instruct you with everyone else doing the other four hours and then one not with you? Because I'm like, maybe I'm just fixated on that, but I'm just thinking take away somebody's income for a field of project, it's great, but at the end of the day, they still have to put food on the table. Yeah. But when it started in the first year, it was four years now, we, uh, we have a center now, so we open 24 7 in the So uh, most of the first group of people. Are full time staff. Brent, the guy that were trying to kill his parent, his mom, and his dad, is one of the directors of all that now. So, what we've done, most of it, we actually have a problem. We have to fight off headhunters now that's coming to head some of our team. It's a good problem. We love that because it means it makes room to grow more of it. Um, so, so, what we did basically in the first year, a lot of them, we, there's a lot of kind of mentorship that goes on hand in hand. It's, it's very much creating a nurturing environment, especially when you work in environments where people are comfortable. Or that thing about self-belief is not there. So that has been, it's creating that, but once people have hope and they see the possibilities, then after that they feel they can do anything. It's like, I mean, honestly, there's so much ideas that people, how many of you ever, just be honest, have ever had this kind of mind? Have you ever asked yourself a question like, if only there was this, my life would be so much easier. If only there was that. You are, if only my phone could do that, you are the sort of people. Have you ever asked something like that? Yeah. You are, people ask it all the time. Now we listen to stories. So you have uh, hundreds of people coming together. If it's bothers, they might say, oh, if only the, you know, when the weather is like this, our oh, hair goes like that. A woman thing, right? Or something, whatever the case may be. You know, so what we do, we basically, if all of them are saying and telling the same story, that's when we then encourage them, why don't you come up with a solution to that problem? If you can't find any way of solving that problem. So there's always a lot of ideas 
but nobody really acts on it. You know, we, we, we like to say it and complain about things. Right? We're all about, and that is why we love being in places where there's lots of problems. Because that, that means there will be a lot of work. Yeah, responding to uh, a student uh, uh, question, uh, I think the model is really a great innovation and it's going to be applicable in the context of Tanzania. Except that, of course, yeah, you are embedding uh, technologies into the social problems of uh, particular communities. And of course, these social problems vary from places to places and environment to environment. So uh, the issues with the drug dealing and crime might not be such a case in most parts of Tanzania, especially in the rural ones. So it's the matter of also innovating in relation to the particular social issues of a certain particular place. So, Talking maybe of the rural Tanzania, maybe uh, embedding that with uh, farming practices for a certain rural area where there are farmers of a certain kind of crop or uh, other issues which are really grassroots kind of problems within that particular community. But if there is that kind of innovation embedded into that particular form of technology, then social networking inside, in the same sense, this would be a very good move. That's exactly the thing. I think only in Cape Town, we, I think Cape Town, and it's probably when we do the one in Mexico, will have something to do with drugs. But the other places has got nothing. It's, it's, it's looking at what's the local need, the local tension that draws people together, and then using that tension to innovate and empowering and equipping the community. That's important, you see. It's, it wasn't us going in, solving a problem, and then going. It was basically equipping and empowering them so that they know that if something changes, this is what they can do to actually come up with new solutions and bring on different partners, working with, the, with universities, with agencies, with private sector, public sector. And I think it was that kind of component where you create that environment for people to... So if something happens tomorrow, they can, oh, no, no problem. They can quickly come together and come up with innovative solutions. But you have to equip them and empower them to do so. And, 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 and exactly. But a nice thing about this is that let's say, for example, there's a solution that comes with, let's say, family plan or something to that effect. You know, uh, that, and there's a, a very good way of how, especially to reach uh, in a rural setting. Immediately, we can say, hey, but that same problem we have in South Africa, that same problem we have, they have in rural parts in Southeast Asia in South America, immediately that innovation can now be scaled to other parts of the world. Now just imagine that community in rural Tanzania has come up with this idea and of course there's the benefits will feed back into them. So to think that they're actually now, they are now contributing to this kind of global innovation that basically, and that is one of the other key things for us. It's about how we can learn together as a, a kind of a movement where it's, it's always about people first. And we use creativity and innovation. Technology plays a big role, but it's not the end goal. If it means that we have to be innovative and not use technology, then we have to do But, but it's, it's all about that kind of, what are the local context, what are the local, and how that can be utilized. Use what you have at hand to make a difference. So we will flood, as much as we won't mind, flood you all with iPads. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's an app installed that will give you everything you need.